Yeah, this is the best thing I could come up with. First and foremost, the all-up weight of this quad is now 675 grams with the two cameras on board. I am using a Revo Electrix HV 1500 milliamp pack to try and kind of offset the extra weight. But basically, all performance of my quad has been destroyed. You can't really tell from the video, but if you're flying something that is above 650 grams on 4S, please just stop flying it or put 5S on it because it really it really sucks with 4S <laughs> with that much weight. Anyways, all right, so what you're watching here is the GoPro Session 5 and a prototype of the box camera from Foxeer. Now, I have, first off, I haven't really, I haven't even told you which one is which, but I don't think I need to. You can probably tell for yourself. In the past, I have made some comments about the Runcam 3 as well as other action cams, and people have taken that as me meaning that they are terrible cameras. They are not bad cameras, they are perfectly fine, but I like the best quality possible, and for the longest time I held out on buying a GoPro because I just disliked the company so, so much, and I've tried every other camera I could find, and finally I spent some time on the set of a, of a TV show, and I got to know the director of photography, which is really 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 talented but I could not believe how much I learned from him I I'm not a, I'm, I'm an amateur photographer I would consider myself an amateur photographer but I know a good deal about photography and I learned a lot from this guy and uh, I'll put his link or his information of his Instagram you can follow him if you like but he is truly truly talented if you're looking for a director, director of photography he gets my highest recommendation from somebody that knows nothing about photography with respect to movies and TV shows. Anyways, okay, let's get back to the comparison here. So, my previous comments about Runcam and and uh, pretty much just Runcam because no other camera is really uh, con in consideration right now. The Xiaomi is another consideration, but uh, these are lower-end cameras. The Xiaomi camera, the 4K camera, can do higher resolution, but the other cameras only do 1080p. And the reason I bring to attention 1080p is that I really dislike 1080p because of a lot of things that I learned from the guy on the TV show. But the reason I dislike 1080p is that the resolution is just really, really, really low. It's so much prettier to look at a really high resolution picture, even if I sacrifice the 60 frame per second, which I personally think that 48 frame per second is a perfect, uh, frame, perfect speed for uh, most action and the way we fly and everything we do. But I will take the higher resolution over the frame rate any day because I want that high resolution. I want it to look super crisp and super nice and super pretty. Now that's my preference, you guys can have your own preference. But what you're looking at here are the box camera, which is the only other camera I would consider aside from the uh, Session 5 because it has a similar form factor, which the form factor is very, very nice. And it has 2.7K resolution and also does a sort of super view. You'll notice that when I do these rotations, when I'm looking at the tree or looking at the ground, the distortion on the box camera is a little bit odd, whereas the distortion on the GoPro is much, much better. Now, if you compare the lens on the box compared to the GoPro lens, you'll notice that the lens on the box camera or the Legend 3, which are very similar, is much highly, much more highly engineered than the GoPro lens. I, I don't think GoPro spent that much time engineering their lens because if you put it on another camera, it looks way more distorted than the lens from Foxeer. And Foxeer specifically told me that they have spent a lot of time and money developing this lens so that it has low distortion. And it does, in fact, have low distortion. It's just that it's such a wide field of view that you can't help but have some distortion. GoPro has done some magic that has made it drastically better. A very interesting point here to make is that the box camera, I believe, is using the same exact camera sensor as well as the same processor as the GoPro. So there is some magic that GoPro has done to their camera that makes it that much better, and it looks that much better. You'll probably have noticed that the box camera's video just looks kind of thin, low fidelity, it doesn't really look as nice, rich, beautiful, correct as the GoPro. Uh, the way I'm going to break it down for you is that it has low 
bit depth, when you're looking at the sun, you see that the color depth and the bit depth, the, the contrast ratio of the colors is not exactly as good as the GoPro. GoPro has a much broader range of colors, so you can see the sun more, you can see the gradient of the sky more, you can see the ground more. It's just a nicer picture. It has more depth to the picture so that in post-processing, you can pull the image up and down and edit it much easier, and it's, uh, it just works out better. The Box camera has a similar bit rate. They both have similar bit rates, which I, I, is of no importance to me because I only focus on the end, end product, the end quality of the video. But uh, I'm going to mention that they do have similar bit rates. But something about the way it's processing the image is just very, very different. Uh, maybe it's not the sensor it said, they say it is. Maybe it's something else. I don't know. But the picture generally looks, well, aside from the blue tint that it has, it's much less, much cooler picture than the GoPro. It just doesn't have the contrast ratio that I would like. It doesn't have the depth of picture to allow me to, to really improve it and fix it in post-processing, although I'm not really the best video editor, but it doesn't have those qualities. Now, this doesn't mean it's a bad camera. This camera is a third the price of the GoPro, and it's pretty much doing all the same stuff. It can do 4K 30, although 2.7K 30 SuperView is the best setting on the GoPro as well as the box camera and I recommend that 2.7K SuperView 30 frame per second which is all I use on the GoPro to everybody because it is just better for everything but racing. If you're racing you want to do you want the 60 frame per second because the action is so fast you really want to get more more video. You want to have more frames of what's going on. Something to note is that this is a prototype camera, so they are still tweaking it, they are still changing it, they're going to improve it, and they are also going to have neutral density filters that you can put on the front of it as the lens protector, so it's going to help with the with the um, kind of the shutter speed so that it doesn't, it, you get a little bit of blur so the picture looks really smooth even at 30 frames per second. I have given them some pointers and tips on this camera to try and improve it, but I can't really change the, the, the inherent quality of the camera. As I said, it's not a bad camera, it's a third the price. And it's doing about 85-90% of what the GoPro can do. So if you're outside the US or you don't have access to an Amazon or a Best Buy warranty, this is a great option for you because it's going to give you better quality than the run cam. It's going to give you that 2.7K, which is really, really nice. But um, yeah, it's a, it's a good camera and it's, it's, a, it's a very good performer and I would prefer this camera over the run cam 3 because it has the high resolution and it's giving you similar quality video that you can pull up and down and you know edit in post processing and get a really nice pretty picture regarding the gopro lawsuit against run cam we have no idea if fox here is going to have the same lawsuit against them i think they might they don't know themselves we don't know why exactly gopro sued run cam aside from the fact that they have competition now because their other manufacturers are making cameras that are similar quality and same form factor um, i think that might be the reason why they sued them but you know you can't really patent a cube with foxier they actually have real competition because this camera can do a lot of the same things that the gopro can oh yeah i forgot to mention the audio sucks but i'm just going to throw audio out because it's not as important as the video Foxier might definitely be sued by GoPro and they might go the same direction that Runcam went and make it a external camera with a 30 by 30 mounting board that you can have and mount inside your frame, which I think is a fantastic solution. I think that is an awesome thing that Runcam did and I appreciate that they did it and uh, I wouldn't use it because I don't really have a use for 1080p, although if I was building a three inch or something and I wanted to get HD video out of it, that's amazing. It's amazing to put that thing in a three inch or doing just fun flying on the weekends and sharing with friends or doing some fun flying racing. I would definitely put that in my race setup just for fun racing, not serious racing because it's awesome because you can get really nice footage and an FPV camera and it's not, okay, the latency is there, but whatever. If you're not doing really high end racing, it's not a big deal and you get HD video that you can share with everybody and it's really cool and really entertaining. So that's the fun of it. But at the end of the day, if you're looking for the really nice, high quality footage and you want to use it for something production related, the GoPro is going to be your go-to solution. And I hate, hate, hate to recommend the GoPro, but it is a freaking awesome camera and the audio on it is astonishingly good. And even though it's so freaking expensive, it's just something about how well it takes video. It makes everything look good, even this dry, dead dirt that you're looking at here. I, I was going to find a more rich and vibrant location, but once I compared the two videos, I realized that there was no point because 
there's such a huge difference between them that you don't need me. You don't need to see me flying in any other location. You can already see which one is better than the other one. And you're not really getting the box camera for the best resolution. You're getting it because it's a little bit cheaper. It gives you a similar uh, resolution and field of view, and it's this, it's a similar size, so that you can fit it on your quad, and you can get like the same kind of frame set up with the same mounts that will exist for your quad, and it all fits together really nicely. It's a really nice solution. That's all I have. I mean, I'm not going to review the camera in depth. I'm not going to go through picture details and you know zoomed in everything and bit rate of you know every square of video and pixel because it doesn't really matter. The end result is what matters. It's your actual use and the actual footage that you use that makes any difference. If you've seen some of my previous reviews, you'll know that I don't really focus on anything but the user experience and the actual use of the product because that's really all that matters to me. But in this case, I'll make a special exception because this is a somewhat exceptional product. I have recorded this before I actually did the flight and I have not even seen the footage from this camera. I'm only gonna be telling you about the form and factor and shape and physical use of this camera. So I can't even drop you know, tidbits about what I think the video quality is gonna be like. So let's first start with the size and the shape. This is a GoPro Session 5, and you can see that it's pretty much bigger than the GoPro Session 5 in every dimension by a couple of millimeters. So let's measure the GoPro Session 5, which I already know is about 37 millimeters on every side. It's a perfect cube. Uh, 36, 37 millimeters, perfect cube. The box camera is not a perfect cube. It is exactly 40 millimeters in this dimension. Exactly 40 millimeters in this dimension. Actually, it might be a perfect cube. And oh, it is. So it is a perfect cube. I think I measured it incorrectly last the last time I measured it. So it's a perfect cube. It's exactly 40 millimeters, about three millimeters bigger on any dimension compared to a GoPro. And what that means is that you're not going to be able to fit it in all the cases that the GoPro has available to it. And it def definitely doesn't fit in the TPU case that you already have for your session. Let's look at the weight. I believe it weighs about 1.9 grams than the Session 5. 74.5 grams. And the Session 5 is 72.3 grams. So it's a little bit more than 2 grams heavier, which is perfectly fine. Uh, I cannot comment on the battery life because I have not even run my GoPro's battery life down to zero. Uh, in flying sessions and I cannot comment about the durability because I have not crashed it yet but let's look at the actual function of the case so the session 5 if you have a session 5 you know that it has a very nice useful functional door that has waterproof sealing the box camera does not have waterproofing the session 5 has the screen on it the box camera does not have any of that stuff it has two buttons one is for turning on and off and switching from camera to photo and one is just to start and stop record the Wi-Fi on it works fantastic it connects Every single time that I tried to connect it to my phone, it connected perfectly. The front of it has this little light looking thing, which is actually not a light. I don't really know why. Maybe I have a prototype version still, and maybe the final version will have a light that blinks there, but that is not really a light. I, I think they just put it there thinking that they would make it an LED, but who knows. The door of it is really the most annoying part. It's really, it's not a deal breaker, but it's annoying that like a it doesn't quite, you know, it's kind of cheapy feeling. It's not really an expensive camera, but it's a kind of a cheapy feeling door. Something very interesting to note is that the SD card actually goes into the camera at an angle. And that's the same as the GoPro. I don't really know why that is, why both of them have this angulation of going into the case. But it's an interesting thing that I noted. And the angle on the uh, box camera is actually more drastic than the GoPro. Interesting. Uh, the box camera has an HDMI port out. The session does not have an HDMI port out. Um, the box camera uses a traditional USB mini, not the micro and not the USB-C. The session is using a USB-C connector. And uh, the front plate, the front like plate, the glass is replaceable. And uh, based on my recommendations, they are gonna have neutral density filters to replace the front glass with which will be very nice for special videography because the camera, I'm pretty sure, has pretty good video quality, which you already saw. Anyways, um, yeah, that's that's really all I can say about the camera. The sides are, are curved. You, you can generally see the form. Uh, I'm sure people will have uh, 3D models of it so that you can make cases and various things for it. That's uh, about it. I don't know the pricing. Oh, yeah, one other thing. They are going to try and get it for sale on Amazon.com so that you can get the Amazon warranties, the Square Trade warranty or the Assure Guard warranty or whatever else that the Amazon you know, site has available to you. And one other thing which I think this camera does, 
So you hold this button to turn it on, then you hold this button to turn on the Wi-Fi, and I'm actually gonna start recording right now. It's not really on yet, it's still thinking. It's blinking, blinking, okay. Now it's on. So I pit press this. Now it's recording. It's recording and I know that it has a uh, accelerometer inside and like the Legend 2, I think it actually has the ability to start alarming when it senses that it's recording but it has no movement. So I'm gonna set it down here and see if that actually works. I've waited a full two minutes and it has not sounded the alarm. In the app, when you connect it to the, to the phone, it does have an option to turn the alarm on and off. I'm now thinking that that's probably just the sounds it makes when it turns on and off, which is really upsetting because that feature that was on the Legend 2 was a really, really, really useful feature. I know these days everybody's kind of using the TPU mount so the cameras don't really go flying, but when they do go flying and you have that feature, it's really easy to find the camera, so it's really nice. I really wish they would have put, put that in this camera too. Maybe it has it, maybe the firmware just needs to be updated. I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure this is still just a prototype version. But that's it for now, and um, really the most important factor of this whole thing was the video. So that you saw at the beginning. And that's it. Don't forget to floss.